from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Republican presidential candidates try to position themselves to be the leading alternative to frontrunner Donald Trump in a debate last night. Up next, why most said they would support Trump as their nominee, even if he is convicted of a crime. After a break from the heat and some much needed rain around here, it was back to same old, same old around South Texas yesterday. What about our Thursday? Mike goes to age. We'll have details coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 24th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. And yes, it was back to the heat yesterday, but still not as hot as it's been. I don't even know what the high temperature was yesterday, Mike. I was back to my hibernation. I will come out at some point this fall. <laughs> 98. <laughs> So we didn't hit 100. Okay, that's great. It was, but the humidity was really, really yeah. high, and uh, it's going to stay high today. But then we're also going to be topping 100 again. So we start chalking those up once again. We have mostly clear skies as of right now, and uh, 79 degrees, 81 Canyon Lake numbers. Temperatures are about where they've been the past couple of mornings, but these numbers are still high, maybe down a couple of notches from this time yesterday. But you get those dew points: 74, 75, 77 there at Randolph. That's pretty darn humid, so 84 is what it feels like at uh, Randolph, 87 there at Canyon Lake. We do have a whole bunch of mold out there. No big surprise, really, but it was down on the very low side a couple of days ago, and then all that rain, and so mold is 16,500 from yesterday's reading. Updated count, of course, comes out later on this morning. It is a yellow conservation day for CPS Energy. Of course, you can scan that QR code to find out uh, more about that. We're back to having some heat advisories in our northern and north and eastern counties up until 9 o'clock tonight. That's where the highest heat index readings are going to be, although we will have a pretty good heat index around here. 78 for a high temperature. Excuse me. For morning temperature, wish it was that wishful thinking, and then 101 for a high today. But then when you factor in the humidity, it's going to be feeling like 105, 106 around here. Southeasterly wind at uh, 15, 20 miles per hour later on today. We will get even hotter the next couple of days, but also a very small rain chance and slightly better rain chances going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Just two weeks into the new school year, a Carnes County School District southeast of San Antonio is closing its doors temporarily. Rungi Independent School District, which has just over 200 students total, says rising COVID cases within the district are to blame. The district's website says it has 10 active cases as of Monday. All 10 were among its 43 staffers. Classes and extracurriculars are canceled through the week. Rungi plans to reopen Tuesday morning. And this morning, a local apartment complex is responding after families who were moving their kids into their new apartments at UTSA this past weekend were hit with some foul smells. Now, one parent tells Casey that she was surprised at how dirty her son's new unit at University Oaks was when they moved him in. She's worried about a substance found in the vents, and another new tenant says she had a similar experience with the unit being dirty and full of bugs. They should be checking the rooms before move in just to do like basic maintenance and basic cleaning like vacuuming the carpets you cannot break your contract because they're going to do whatever it takes to give you a livable condition well being infested with mold and roaches is not a livable condition university oaks offers on-campus housing at utsa but the property is owned and operated by a separate company the management company says it is responding to the complaints and asking residents to make further complaints directly to on-site management. Now to last night's presidential debate and reaction this morning. This was not the debate that most people expected. At the end of the night, the three candidates with the most speaking time were former President Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Chris Christie. Now, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis second in the polls was not the center of attention. ABC's Lionel Moise explains if any of the candidates stood out enough to challenge the frontrunner, Donald Trump. Sparks flew almost immediately after the eight Republican presidential candidates took the stage in Milwaukee, minus former President Donald Trump. As Mike Pence went after Vivek Ramaswamy, the 38-year-old entrepreneur who's been rising in the polls. Now is not the time for on-the-job training. We don't need to bring in a rookie. Now that everybody's gotten their memorized, pre-prepared slogans out of the way, we can actually have a real discussion now. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie also taking on Ramaswamy. I've had enough already tonight of a guy who sounds like ChatGPT standing up here 
On the issue of abortion, Haley and Pence were at odds over a 15-week federal ban. It's a moral issue. A 15-week ban is an idea whose time has come. Well, when you're talking about a federal ban, be honest with the American people. Don't make women feel like they have to decide on this issue when you know we don't have 60 Senate votes in the House. Trump's closest rival in the polls, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, sharply criticized how Trump handled the pandemic lockdown. And in Florida, we led the country out of lockdown. We kept our state free and open. On the war in Ukraine, Ramaswamy said he would forego giving more money to Ukraine. You have no Let foreign me. policy experience and it shows. And you know One of the more dramatic moments came when the candidates were asked to raise their hand if they would support Trump as the nominee. Whether or not you believe that the criminal charges are right or wrong, the conduct is beneath the office of president of the United States. ABC's political director Rick Klein says the candidates brought up Trump far less than expected. Vivek Ramaswamy took a lot of the incoming that might have otherwise gone to Trump. He was the most stridently pro-Trump. And so some of the ways that you saw Nikki Haley, Mike Pence, Chris Christie unload on Vivek Ramaswamy, it's almost like they were doing it to Donald Trump in, a, in, in his absence. Trump tried to counter-program the debate, appearing in a pre-recorded interview with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, making more false claims about the 2020 election and attacking some of the other candidates. Former President Trump reacted online after the debate, taking issue with Pence's comments about January 6th and calling Chris Christie's performance last night horrible. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. There we go. Mike's open now. In California, at least three people are dead. Several others injured after a shooting at a biker bar last night. According to the Orange County Sheriff's Department, deputies killed the shooter within two minutes of arriving on scene. The suspect was a former law enforcement officer. The shooting happened at Cook's Corner Bar and Restaurant in Trabuco Canyon, Canyon southeast of Los Angeles. Police believe it's possibly started from a domestic dispute between two parties. India is now the first country to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole. Scientists believe the uncharted territory could hold vital reserves of frozen water. A lander with a rover inside touched down on the lunar surface earlier today, sparking celebrations around India. And after a failed attempt nearly four years ago, India now joins the U.S., the Soviet Union, and China in achieving a moon landing. It's about time for the pumpkin spice everything, so why not let your dog partake? Krispy Kreme wants to help with that. In honor of National Dog Day on Saturday, participating stores will be selling pumpkin spice doggy donuts. While they're inspired by pumpkin spice donut collection for humans, doggy donuts are actually biscuits. Aww. If you have, to act, you have to act fast if you want your best friend to try them, Krispy Kreme only selling doggy donuts through next Thursday. Well, I'd say their timing's off by a little bit, but I love the idea. Sure, I'm, I'm sure the pets will appreciate it. And then take them over to Starbucks for a puppuccino. <laughs> 438, 77 degrees. And buying for a baby doesn't mean you have to break the bank, but when you shop consignment stores or accept donations, make sure the items are safe for babies. We're going to tell you how and what you should look out for. Let's check Trans Guide early this morning. We have a stalled 18 wheeler, 35 at Alamo right now, and uh, some of those hazard triangles are out now on the road. Be advised. And humidity is in the air, but we are starting Thursday at 77 degrees. Not too bad for now. Things are expected to heat up once again later this afternoon. We'll be checking in with Mike for those details and for the rest of your weekend coming up. Now, welcome back. It's 441. So face it, cute as they are, our babies can be expensive. And that's why parents often look for baby gear at consignment shops or online exchanges. But 12 in your sides, Marilyn Moritz says it can be risky buying cribs and car seats used. Sarah Peterson is expecting baby boy number four. So she's getting everything ready. Luckily, we would ended up keeping a lot of our things from the other babies. So we have a lot of clothes. We had to get a new changing pad. Shopping secondhand or accepting hand-me-downs can certainly help with expenses. But one thing you shouldn't skimp on is safety. While it's illegal to sell recalled products, including on the secondhand market, people might not be aware of the law. 
or may not even realize that the product they're selling has been recalled. It's not uncommon to find recalled infant sleepers and other products. Federal regulators recently sent a letter to Meta asking it to do more to prevent sales of banned or recalled products. And beware of cribs with drop-down sides. They've been linked to dozens of infant deaths and were banned 12 years ago. Even parents planning on using a newer crib need to be careful because it may not be assembled correctly. Then there are used car seats. Buying used car seats is not a good idea because you won't reliably know a lot about the seat. You won't know the seat's crash history. If you do go for a used car seat that you know hasn't been in a crash, check the expiration date and check for recalls at recalls.gov. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 443, 77 degrees. It's already time to start looking at upcoming Labor Day deals. Up next, a preview of which items are being discounted the most. And welcome back. It's 445. Summer is not over yet, but many retailers are already offering their Labor Day deals. ABC's Becky Worley has the details of today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the Labor Day sale conundrum. Go for the deals now or play the waiting game. Labor Day happens right at the end of summer and right at the beginning of fall. So retailers are changing the season. They want to clear the summer stuff out to make room for colder weather items. The sizzle of the barbecue is starting to fade as Labor Day marks the end of summer. But it also provides an opportunity for savings. You're going to find a lot of that seasonal clothing, seasonal outdoor stuff, and seasonal outdoor furniture on sale. Categories to focus on seasonal summer items like outdoor furniture, barbecues, and this outdoor grill on sale from Walmart. It was $295, now it's $176. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the Labor Day sales strategy you need to get the biggest deals at the best value. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Here at home, whenever there is a heat advisory in effect, CPS Energy says it's a policy to halt disconnects for late payments. It's especially important for seniors having to pay high energy bills. Jesse Degollado says many of them are doing what they can to reduce their usage, even if it means leaving their homes after they turn off their AC. We've shown you how many seniors struggle to keep their homes cool. For some, it could be a matter of life and death. Thankfully, this woman now has an air conditioner that actually works. But last year it wasn't as hot. Like no. And thankfully for these women, they have an oasis, the District 5 Senior Center. It's been a blessing, it really has. A blessing for Alma McRae and the others who, like her, would much rather be here enjoying the company and the free air conditioning. I wanted them to be able to come in for the activities, and now we're finding they're coming in because of the heat. Maria Perez's last energy bill, she says, was $200 for using her only window unit. Sometimes I, I do get assistance, but will it be enough? I looked at the bill and I'm like, oh, please don't let it be over 100. <laughs> and it wasn't, thank goodness. San Antonio may have broken its streak of triple digit temperatures for now, but it's still going to be hot. Yet thanks to COVID relief funds, the city's 11 senior centers now have extended hours. Anyone 60 or older is welcome from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday. CPS Energy also has options for seniors, like taking longer to pay, a late fee waiver, and possibly a discount. For information, call CPS Energy or go to its website, cpsenergy.com slash assistance. Maybe I'll apply for it. I'll have to try it. Jesse De Goyado, KSAT 12 News. Looking out there with Transguide, looks like we have an 18-wheeler off the side of the road right there at I-35 at Alamo. And uh, just for the most part, construction around town and a stall not too bad at this early hour. Still awfully early out there. I had no idea that we didn't even have 100 today, so that's a, that's a huge victory for South Texas. Yes, yeah. it is. Close enough, though. You know, 98, I know it's kind of a that psychological victory, but um, the humidity yesterday was still hanging in there. Yeah. Now, granted, you know, like at this time, we were talking about, okay, we're grinning bear it since it was all due to all the rain that we had. Exactly. Uh, we still have plenty of humidity hanging around here, though, and we still have some great rain pictures coming on in here. This is from uh, one of our regular KSAC Connect uh, senders. 
Contributors, thank you. I, couldn't think, I, was, I was hoping you'd jump in there. Uh, yeah, Yvonne, nice to see the rain. Got a whole bunch of it there over there on the uh, the west side. And we still had some of those lingering showers around as expected yesterday. Then that came to an end and rain has come to an end for the time being. So mostly clear skies right now. 83 is what it feels like out there. 87 at Canyon Lake and low 70s in parts of the hill country. And we may fluctuate a degree or two from where we are right now. We have a couple of clouds this morning and then we're going to continue up through the 90s, low 90s at noon and top off at 101 today. So that's going to bump us up into I believe it's third place now as far as the total number of triple digit days in one year. Then we've got the humidity later on this afternoon. So heat index is going to be back up around 106 here in town, even higher up to the northeast. And that's where some of those uh, heat advisories are going into the future into tomorrow. They're going to be it, it's going to start to get hotter. We'll add a degree or two over tomorrow over the weekend, but we will have one or two showers, a stray shower thunderstorm out there. Very few and far between. That's going to be the situation over the weekend as well. Here's what's going on again. The high was far enough up to the north of us. That's what allowed Harold to move on in here. And today it's kind of kind of settling in and, and cutting things off from that easterly flow. But as we go into the weekend, it is going to allow more of that easterly flow. So that's going to allow a couple of stray showers or so. Not a big deal. I only got it at about 10% as far as rain chances around here over the weekend. But as that thing continues to slide off to the west a little bit more, we're still watching this big, big trough digging around the Great Lakes. What that's going to do is actually have a front lie in the area. Now, this is not the front that's going to bring fall by any stretch, but it's going to be enough to give us a better chance for a couple of showers by Tuesday, Wednesday and also knock temperatures down a couple of degrees. So it'll be back down in the upper 90s by the middle part of next week. So at least it's not going to be another extended stretch of triple digits, although four or five days of triple digits is definitely going to be enough. 101 today, 103s over the weekend. And like I said, that front lies in the area Tuesday, Wednesday, and that'll shave a few degrees off. So it'll be back to the upper 90s and a little bit better chance of rain middle of next week. That would be good to have more chances next week. Yes, it would. But this last weekend of August is definitely going to be a scorcher. All right. We will tough it out. Thank you, Mike. 452, 77 degrees. Up next, another big milestone for Morgan Wallen and a big birthday for superstar comedian Dave Chappelle. 5 till 5 this morning. We now know the most streamed song of the summer. Well, it is what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. If the Egyptians defeat us with Soviet weapons, what message does that send to the free world? The new movie Golda is a portrait of a tough prime minister facing the pressure of war. Helen Mirren plays former Israeli leader Golda Meir, and director Guy Nativ tells me the transformation into character was taxing for the Oscar-winning actress. She woke up at 4 a.m. At 4.30, she got into the makeup trailer for three and a half hours. And they would film until 7.30 at night. Then Mirren would have to have all the makeup and prosthetics removed. But she did take a one hour sleep in the middle of the day that, that reboot her. Golda is in theaters this weekend. You told me that you wish I was somebody you never met. The liquor talked and we all listened this summer. Morgan Wallen's Last Night was the most streamed summer song on Spotify in the U.S. The first time a country song has taken the top spot. In second, it's Ella Baila Sola by Esleban Armado and Peso Pluma, which was also the most streamed song worldwide this summer on Spotify. Taylor Swift's Cruel Summer was third in the U.S. And superstar comedian Dave Chappelle with a birthday today, he's 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 456 and 77 degrees for now. Former President Donald Trump will surrender today to Georgia authorities on charges he tried to interfere with the 2020 election. Up next, what Trump says he has scheduled next after he goes through the booking process. And the San Antonio water system has been dealing with a lot of water main breaks in the city. Just ahead, how SAWS is handling nearly a thousand main breaks in one month and how to avoid getting fined if you're watering your yard. Ahead on GMSA at 6, Texas will be in the Little League World Series U.S. Championship this weekend, how they got there, and where you can watch the matchup on Saturday. Let's look out there with Transguy looking at I-35 at Alamo. We still see that 
18 wheeler off to the side of the road, but Stephen Cavazos is in the studio, so we're going to check in with him in just a minute. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Former President Trump now hours away from surrendering in the Georgia election interference case. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the details from Atlanta. And let's look out there with live cam this morning. We're starting at 77 degrees. Humid out there, but again, I think well worth it after all that rain we got on Tuesday. Hope your back to school week is going well. Good morning. It's Thursday, August 24th. Thanks for joining us. And yes, it's getting back to our normal and getting back to hot again. That's right. No doubt about that. And we say good morning to Mike Osterhage. Good morning. And I was just thinking about something you brought up yesterday, Mr. Austin. After all this rain, make sure you go around the yard and dump any like flower pots, things like that, any sort of standing water because that could get those mosquitoes going back again. So we don't want that to happen. All right, we're at 78 right now. Dew points at 75, that bottom number. When you get up to the 75 degree range, that's pretty darn humid. So it will definitely greet you when you uh, step outside. We are going to make it up to 101. Yesterday, we only hit 90. I say only, but 98 degrees. Still a couple of notches above normal. Two days in a row below 100. I mean, that's a little bit of a, a victory, I guess. But yeah, it is back to the triple digits today. And the humidity is going to be sticking around pretty good. So you'll definitely feel it throughout the day. The aquifer, nice big bump from uh, all that rain that we had because it did end up having a fair amount in the uh, uh, recharge zone, obviously. So went up one foot yesterday and the allergens also went sky high mold 16,500. It's probably going to be dropping down a little bit. The updated count is going to come out later on this morning. Of course, we are at uh, 81 degrees when you factor in the humidity right now. Same thing over there at Randolph 85 Canyon Lake. Otherwise, uh, 70, some low 70s parts of the hill country is what it feels like. Again, mold is very, very high, and that's been it's been something folks have been having to, to deal with. And all of a sudden, that mold does bump up there. Heat advisories in effect through this evening for our extreme north and eastern counties, and then that gets bumped up to excessive heat warnings up around Austin. Very humid. Couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Plenty of sunshine. Again, back to triple digit temperatures, and we are going to be in the hundreds this weekend. Actually up a few degrees, but there's also going to be just a very small chance for a stray shower too. Not a great chance. However, next week after a hot start, I'm going to drop into the upper 90s. Not a huge cool down. We'll take anything we can get. Plus, a little bit better chance for a couple of showers out there by the middle part of next week. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Mr. Cavazos. Anything going on yet? Well, we still have this old 18 wheeler, Mike. Uh, we've had our eyes on it for a little while now. This is along I 35 northbound uh, near the Alamo exit. Watch out there. We do have some emergency lights on, so the driver is likely still in that vehicle. But let's hope that we'll see some resolution soon. Maybe a Texas hero truck will arrive on the scene and we'll see this uh, tow truck or we'll see this 18 wheeler uh, move along, but right now you're seeing traffic moving along there and along the northbound lanes without any trouble. Just watch out, move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights out there. Okay, so the big news uh, yesterday was the closure here along I-35. Around this time yesterday, we did see some crews out there that were placing what appeared to be concrete barriers. I told you we were going to work to get you that answer, and we do know that closure will be in place for at least the next year. Textile crews are still evaluating the damage that was done to that bridge following a fire that sparked more than two months ago. So in the meantime, they're exploring options for that stretch there, Brooklyn Avenue, but you can expect to see that closure at least well into next year. Time dates, uh, still don't know exactly when we'll see that reopen or if we'll see that reopen. But once we have more updates, we're going to let you know. Giving you a wide look at the map, not a lot else going on out there. Thankfully, just plenty of that construction we can always expect in and around the Alamo City. None of it slowing folks down, though. If you're heading into the Alamo City, it's still a pleasant drive along 37 northbound from Pleasanton, 29 minutes at this hour. Usual drive time along US 90 eastbound, about 30 minutes from heading in from Castroville. And that arrival from Lytle, about 15 minutes if you are heading northbound along I-35. But we'll keep a close eye on this 18-wheeler here. Hopefully, we'll see some better news in the next few minutes or so. But we'll have more updates for you coming up a little bit later this morning. Morning, guys. Thank you, Stephen. This morning, the San Antonio water system is dealing with an influx of water main breaks across the city. Two of them are just from this week. The extreme heat is partly to blame, but as John Paul Barajas reports, Saz says it's also your fault. I've already seen quite a few this morning just on the way to work. So I'm teaching lessons throughout the neighborhood and I ran across three of them. 
Right now, you can find a water main break or leak just about anywhere in San Antonio. 754 breaks and leaks have been reported to the San Antonio water system so far this month, well above the 729 in July. Now, Sauce expects to hit 965 breaks and leaks for all of August. Having up to nearly 1,000 main breaks in one month is an astounding number, but it doesn't shock us given the conditions that we are seeing. Those conditions include a severe drought and record-breaking heat. But Karen Guz with Sauce tells us there's more to the problem. A new thing we are seeing is some people really not getting on board with the rules, despite such strong enforcement. Saws is concerned about customers ignoring stage two water restrictions and watering their lawns with an irrigation system more than once a week. Guz says the impact is adding up. You have a pipe that's already under stress from soils that are shifting. And then when you start pushing a lot of water at high velocity through that, you have more vibration and more stress on the pipe. It's not all straight, too. According to Guz, Siles has issued 6,000 citations for water waste so far this year. There's a lot of homes that have very pretty yards right now. Siles plans to continue to patrol neighborhoods and gated communities. Every time you run an irrigation system, it's about 2,000 gallons at a home. And so if you do it you know, four times a week instead of once. It adds up really fast. Customers caught overwatering or watering on the wrong days do face a $150 municipal court citation. But Saws is looking at other enforcement possibilities that would motivate more people to follow the rules. Those details have not been finalized yet. At Saws, John Paul Barajas, KSA, 12 News. At least three people have drowned in the San Antonio area since late July, including a 16-year-old this past weekend. Well, now one one nonprofit is encouraging all families to learn drowning rescue and CPR training. The Miss Tristan Foundation teaches drowning prevention efforts, offers free waters, offers rather free water safety lessons to kids, showing them what to do if they get stuck in the water by themselves. Teaching them those surviving skills to be able to get out of the water is going to be something that's going to potentially save their lives. Miss Tristan Foundation, named for two-year-old Tristan Bird, she drowned in her family's pool back in 2016. The foundation is created in her memory and also offers free CPR training. Details on how to register are on KSAT.com. Now to Atlanta, Georgia, where former President Donald Trump is expected to surrender to authorities in the Georgia election interference case. Many of Trump's 18 co-defendants have already reported to the Fulton County Jail to be arrested and booked. And as ABC's Justin Finch explains what happens next after Trump surrenders. This morning, the 45th president of the United States is set to turn himself in to Georgia's Fulton County Jail, where they will record his height and weight, fingerprint him, and take his mugshot. Days before his surrender, Donald Trump sat for an interview with former Fox primetime host Tucker Carlson. Trump, now the 2024 Republican presidential frontrunner, telling Carlson his legal troubles are only boosting his voter support and slamming Fulton County's top prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, who handed Trump his fourth criminal indictment this year. The people see it like this horrible district attorney. She said, basically, I don't have any right to challenge an election. Trump and his 18 co-defendants now face a Friday deadline to surrender on charges of racketeering and conspiracy in an alleged effort to overturn Trump's 2020 Georgia election defeat. A number of them have already been booked, including former Trump attorneys Sidney Powell, Jenna Ellis, and Rudy Giuliani, who actively spread false claims of election fraud after the 2020 election. Giuliani swarmed outside the jail Wednesday. I'm being prosecuted for defending an American citizen. Giuliani released on a $150,000 bond. Meanwhile, Trump's former White House Chief of Staff, Mark Meadows, now determining his next move after a federal judge ruled Meadows still needed to present himself for booking by noon on Friday. The judge has not yet ruled on his request to move his case into federal court. And Fulton County DA Willis is standing by that noon Friday surrender deadline, warning that if any co-defendant has not shown by that time, she's filing an arrest warrant. Justin Finch, ABC News, Atlanta. 509, 77 degrees. Up next, why several child advocacy groups have asked the Federal Trade Commission to investigate YouTube.
The marquee matchup in the KSAP Pigskin Classic this year is between Brandeis and O'Connor up next with the team's coaches who used to be teammates are saying about this year's competition. And our break is officially over for a little bit. I mean, I definitely felt that when I was walking around yesterday afternoon with my umbrella, but not for the rain, for the sun once again. We'll be right back. The KSAP Pigskin Classic begins tomorrow night, and the marquee matchup is Brandeis and O'Connor on Saturday night right here on KSAT 12. The head coaches of these schools used to be teammates when they were in high school out at Judson. That's right. Their friendship has lasted through the decades, and they say their programs today match what they learned under some legendary coaches back in the 1980s. Our sports producer, Daniel Villanueva, talked with Charles Bruce and David Molesky to find out more. I envy our guys because I remember special moments as a player. I wish, and I'm thankful they get to experience that because, I mean, it's with me at 57 years old like it was yesterday, you know, and, and I even, and he'll probably testify to this too, I can remember so many things specifically the day before we played in the state championship game, the day of the game, after the game. When we got home from the game, I mean, I, I can remember things. I can't remember some things I did last week, but there's things I can. And, and so it, it's not necessarily a specific thing, but it's just things that had been ingrained in me, in him, in us that pop out. I bet if you go, um, I wasn't at his first coaches meeting. He wasn't at mine. But I bet if you go to it, the bones of it, it's Frank Arnold and D.W. Rutledge. And everything that we do, that's, that's the bone. Now the house is made a little differently. Okay, but the bones of the program, that's what it is. And, and it's funny you say that, because I was thinking today, we went out, we ran sprint laps at the end with the freshmen. That's, back, that's taking you back to high school, you know? Um, so yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But our, the, our bones of our programs, I bet are exactly the same because of who coached us, you know, who put that drive in us and part of the reason why we do what we do. And you can catch much more with both coaches Saturday night in our pregame show prior to the primetime kickoff live here on KSAT 12. Can't wait. Right now, 514, 77 degrees. Google TV is expanding its free live TV lineup. We're going to tell you which channels will be added soon. We're also going to be talking with Stephen Cavazos, getting an update in a few minutes. We'll be right back. Who says you can't get everything you want? Like going for bold without going broke and staying true to your taste while staying on budget. Who says rising costs means lowering the bar? Settling, no need. Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. And squish, and squish, okay, good. Keep squishing, fingers relaxed. And squish. Great. Thank you. Good job. Squish the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Let's go. YouTube TV is the new home of NFL Sunday tickets. Oh, my goodness. Being a fan has never been easier. Watch every game every Sunday with NFL Sunday ticket and YouTube TV. Let's go. Sign up for NFL Sunday ticket now and get $50 off. Thursday morning, 5-18. That's right. And y'all have a good week so far. We, we made it to Thursday. Yeah, it's been yeah. busy. Why does it seem like it's been a long week? Yeah, it, uh, yeah, it has. And I think it's maybe because we have the countdown to the uh, second annual okay. Pigskin Classic. Uh, so I think we're all kind of just eager to meet with our viewers. Thankfully, uh, yeah. We're, yeah. predictions on any of the games. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah. You're all our winners. <laughs> Here's my hope. We had such great matchups last year, such competitive, yeah, intriguing close. games, and I hope mm -hmm. that continues. Weren't all yeah. three games, like, within three points or something? I pretty close, yeah. especially pretty the close. last one, Yeah. The, you know, the evening. And that game. second game went really long. That was great. Yeah, a lot of good football. Sure. So. Same thing. Uh, we'll be out there yeah. uh, for, for games, uh, especially on Saturday. Look for Steph. She'll be in her shoulder pass. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh, football, <laughs> yeah. football yes. maker. Yes. 
up. Yeah. We'll be rooting for you from the side. <laughs> uh, you know what, guys? Uh, this morning, thankfully, traffic's off to a good start. Let's keep our fingers crossed it stays that way. Uh, yeah, Mike, it's been one of those long weeks, and we know we had some issues along Brooklyn Avenue really for the last two months, but we saw some progress, uh, what appeared to be progress yesterday, I should say, uh, but turns out crews are placing concrete barriers along I-35 southbound at the upper level. Looks like we'll see that closure at least well into next year. No date on when or if it will reopen, but we'll keep a close eye on it. For now, traffic 35 and north of Loop 410 moving along just fine. But let's get you to our map. We still at least have that stall 18 wheeler at I-35 northbound near Alamo Street. It's not causing any issues for drivers, but be on the lookout. Make sure you check your vehicles before your commute gets moving this Thursday. Let's take a look at the map. And as I mentioned, a lot of that construction. So it's early enough to mention this to you guys. If you plan on hitting the roads and heading in along Northwest Military Highway later this morning, just be on the lookout. That curb and sidewalk installation will continue. Should wrap tomorrow. But remember, it all begins at 7 this morning, should finish at 6 in the evening. So it's a pretty lengthy project. Alternating lane closures in both directions. That's between Loop 1604 to Hebner Road. But you can scan this QR code. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures and all the updates you need to know about your morning drive, including a full article that breaks down everything along I-35, where we have that exit closed at Brooklyn. Uh, Mike, I think that's going to be the new thorn on a lot of people's side, at least well into the uh, next year. Yeah, yeah, just, I mean, you got to get a whole new new yeah. pattern, new route exactly. for a lot of people around there. So, okay, thank you very much, sir. Another great picture, Yoakum, and look at that, almost two inches of rain in the, uh, the rain gauge from beautiful storms that we had a couple of days ago, and maybe that grass is a little bit greener. I know a couple of patches in my yard, I don't know about you, with some of that rain actually made things slightly greener which is nice. And then a couple of more mm, rain chances later on in the forecast. All right, we had two days without triple digit temperatures. We're in fourth place right now, but uh, today, yes, tomorrow, and then on Saturday, and it looks like by Sunday, I think we're very good chance, pretty good bet that we are going to be moving into first place. I don't know if that's, again, anything to brag about, but the most triple digit uh, temperatures in one year. Mostly clear skies right now. Traffic over there, 410, moving along pretty well. 81 is what it feels like because of all the humidity. Temperatures warm up through the 80s this morning. A couple of clouds hanging around here. 93 already at noon, and yep, we are going to hit 101 today. And enough humidity still. Uh, you'll notice every bit of that 101, and it's actually going to be feeling hotter than that with heat index readings about 106. Not as bad to the south and to the southwest, but it's up to the northeast where we're going to have a lot more with the hotter temperatures, and that's actually closer to where that, that big heat bubble is, which is now plaguing kind of the Midwest and up in toward the Great Lakes. All right, as far as we are concerned, tomorrow, very small chance for a couple of showers, one or two of them out there. Again, not a great chance, but at least there is that small chance. Same thing on Saturday, Sunday, again, one or two of them. Then we get into Monday as well as Tuesday. Notice how, and again, this is kind of broad brush, but there's this whole kind of line of rain that's going to try and work its way down in our direction. There's actually a front which is going to be sort of lying in the area where it actually kind of sets up camp. That's sort of a wait and see situation, but with the extra cloud cover and that front sort of lying in the area, that's going to knock temperatures down a couple of degrees and also give us a little bit better chance for a few showers around here on Tuesday, as well as I think going on into Wednesday. So I was talking about how it's kind of hotter up to the northeast instead of down to the southwest in our area, and that's because the center of all this heat is up there right around the Plains and the Midwest, and so that's why they are going to be dealing with the really, really hot temperatures. And it's going to be hot enough around here as well. Um, I don't know if this is something we get used to, but we're kind of stuck with it. Like I said, by Sunday, we are going to be moving into first place. Again, not necessarily a good first place to be in as far as the total number will hit 60 days this year of triple digit temperatures, and uh, that will continue into Monday. Then that small break in temperatures and a little bit better rain chance. Yeah, I don't know if we want to be in first place. No. Not this time around. So to beat the heat, come to the dome. That's true. Everything's indoors. Yeah, the only kind nice of AC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're ready for you. A marketing professional. 523, <laughs> 77 degrees. Up next, Samsung announces the price and release date for its new 57-inch ultra-wide dual 4K gaming monitor. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick 3059 Fireball 4. Your daily four numbers, 0221 Fireball 5.
Cash 5, 5, 13, 17, 24, 27. Lotto, Texas, 1, 16, 31, 34, 47, 54. And your Powerball numbers, 25, 30, 32, 33, 55, Powerball 20, Power Play 2. Good luck. In today's Tech Bytes, YouTube under fire. Child protection groups are demanding an investigation saying that YouTube is targeting children and its ads after promising it would stop. The company could face billions in fines if government regulators decide it's violating child privacy. A YouTube spokesperson said the watchdog groups have a fundamental misunderstanding of how advertising works. Google TV is expanding its free live TV lineup, providing users with another 25 channels. YouTube's NFL Sunday ticket is included in the new edition Earlier this year, Google TV added several other free channels, including ABC. And finally, gamers can circle their calendars in anticipation of something big. Samsung is releasing the new Odyssey Neo G9 in October. It's a curved monitor, 57-inch LED display, the price tag, $2,500. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 528, 77 degrees. And not paying your credit card bills? Well, you're not alone. Up next, the stores that are reporting the biggest increases in credit card delinquencies. And the Pumpkin Spice Wars have officially begun. Up next, the newest beverages that are available starting today at Starbucks and other major coffee brands. The biggest election landslide victory in the history of the Republican Party in the state of Florida in 2022. That's what I did. Donald Trump added eight trillion to our debt and our kids are never going to forgive us for this. GOP presidential hopefuls faced off last night in a debate in Milwaukee. Up next, why the candidates took time to take shots at President Trump, who's expected to turn himself into Georgia authorities today. Look out there with live cam, 77 degrees. Yes, it's humid. And yes, it's going to heat up again, but I'm still happy about the break we had two days ago. And yes, it's Thursday, August 24th. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good weekend. Yeah, I think it did go a little uh, slower, but maybe just because of the weather change. I don't know. Mm, could be, but <laughs> like you were talking about, yeah. the countdown to the uh, classic one day away starting tomorrow. So it is going to be hot this weekend. It's going to be hot again today. It was really steamy yesterday. You know, we started off in the morning with plenty of humidity. That's the situation this morning as well. We did make it up to 98 officially. So two days in a row, we didn't hit 100 but we're going to be back to uh, chalking those up later on today and then we'll continue to move up in the record books 78 right now dew point that number you get 75 that's really really humid it's that wet towel kind of rainforest humidity out there so it feels like 81 degrees 85 at canyon lake and 81 also at uh, randolph 83 is the heat index right now new Braunfels mold is very high of course from the rain that we had but that should be going down. Of course, the updated count is going to come out in a couple of hours or so. We do have some heat advisories posted once again for our extreme north and eastern counties. And then that gets bumped up into excessive heat warnings, which you might think is kind of unusual because a lot of times our hottest temperatures are down here to the southwest. But up here to the, uh, the northeast, that's closer to the center of that high. And this extreme heat continues all the way up in toward the central plain states and up in toward the, uh, the Midwest, because that thing is sitting up there as of right now, but we're still obviously influencing our weather. 93 at noon, 101 high temperature later on today. So like I said, we are going to continue to start chalking up the, uh, or continue chalking up the uh, triple digit temperatures as we go on in through the weekend. Although we do have some rain chances, not today, but over the next few days and maybe a better chance next week. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, sir? Mike, things have been moving along OK in my department. Of course, we're going to continue to watch the roads closely throughout the morning. But if you have to hit the roads in the next few minutes or so, you should be in luck. We're starting to see a little bit more traffic there at 281. Here's a shot near the quarry where you can see the north and southbound lanes have a few more folks out there. But right there at State Highway 151 near Loop 410, not a lot going on. We know that there's plenty of road work 
taking place. None of it is slowing folks down, so that's great. You can grab that cup of coffee and enjoy a nice quiet drive for now, but make sure to watch out here if you're heading northbound along I-35. We still have that solo 18 wheeler that's out there. Um, I was checking the trans guide cameras. I've not seen any flashing lights out there, so we still have that truck, so just make sure you watch out as your commute does get moving. Hopefully we'll see some resolution pretty soon, but giving you a wide look at the map, as I mentioned, lots of construction taking place, but thankfully we're green on the seeing a lot of green on the screen. Great news to report right there. Travel's taking you into the Alamo City this early in the morning. Let's check out those inbound times. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 23 minutes at this hour. 281 southbound, no need to hurry if you're traveling in from Bolverde. We have a 26-minute commute, and it's not too awful from New Braunfels. Right now along I-35 southbound, we have a 24-minute drive time for anyone that plans on hitting the roads. But one last look here in town, 37 at Jones Avenue and 410 at Blanco. You can see a lot more traffic moving in the metropolitan area. We'll watch roads closely and I'll have another update coming up a little later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. The race for the White House is underway. Fox News held the first Republican presidential debate last night for the 2024 election. Eight candidates took the stage in Wisconsin, taking on a variety of topics from the economy, abortion and foreign policy. CNN's Gloria Pasmino is in Milwaukee with a recap of what happened. The race for the White House takes flight. Eight candidates vying for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination, taking the stage for the first time. They are here to lay out their vision for America. The event was hosted by Fox News in Milwaukee. Heading into Wednesday's debate, the latest poll shows former President Donald Trump with a commanding lead. But on stage, Trump was a no-show. Instead, he sat down for a 45-minute interview with former Fox News host Tucker Carlson, which was released on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm going to have all these people screaming at me, shouting questions at me, all of which I love answering, I love doing, but it doesn't make sense to do them. So uh, I've taken a pass. Agreed. Despite Trump's absence, candidates made the case for why they should be the Republican nominee. Others took swipes at the former president. Donald Trump added eight trillion to our debt, and our kids are never gonna forgive us for this. Those with the most experience highlighted their records. We cut taxes in New Jersey. We cut debt in New Jersey. I led Indiana where we balanced budgets and had a AAA bond rating. We sold uh, the biggest election landslide victory in the history of the Republican Party in the state of Florida in 2022. That's what I did. While political newcomers tried to break away from the pack. I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for. The candidates will face off in another debate again next month in California. Reporting in Milwaukee, Gloria Pasmino. The Biden administration continues its battle for borrowers as the pause on payments is getting ready to come to a close. And if you have student loan debt, experts are urging you to apply for the administration's new plan as soon as possible. It's called SAVE, and it bases your monthly payment on what you earn and the size of your family. That plan would also forgive the remaining balance of the loan after a certain number of years. A reminder that student loan interest resumes on September 1st and payments will resume in October. 537, 77 degrees. Bad news for Peloton, why the company has already lost 20,000 of its subscribers. Get out your scarves and flannel shirts. It's already fall as far as Starbucks is concerned. <laughs> Up next, along with its famous pumpkin spice latte, we'll tell you the other pumpkin creations it's offering this year. I guess we could take out our scarves and flannel shirts. For, and look at them and yeah. then put them back where they were. <laughs> or, or use them in a, you know, a nice AC building, but not outside, not today and probably not this week or this weekend. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's 540 in your morning consumer headlines. Macy's is seeing a spike in the number of customers not paying their credit card bills. The retailer said that delinquencies are higher than what management expected. Credit card revenue for the company is down 36% this year and contributed to a quarterly loss. It got worse in June and July, and Macy's isn't alone. Moody's reported credit card and auto loan delinquencies have now surpassed pre-COVID levels. Many analysts believe credit delinquencies show financial stress on consumers is growing. Peloton losing millions of dollars due to a recall. The exercise equipment's company's earnings report shows the headache is costing the company about $40 million. That's past expectations, sending its stock plummeting. Peloton says the seat of its PL1 bike is a safety hazard because it could break during use. I just got my replacement this week. Some 20,000 members have paused their subscriptions as they await 
the part. The company says it hopes to fulfill the second half of the 750,000 replacement requests by the end of next month. And it may be the hottest day of the year in many parts of America, but if you ask Starbucks, fall is already here. The coffee chain's famous pumpkin spice latte officially returns today. Two other seasonal beverages are also joining the fall menu. An iced apple crisp of oat milk shaken espresso and an iced pumpkin cream chai tea latte a baked apple croissant will also be available for the first time. Pumpkin Spice Wars are starting earlier than ever this year. 7-Eleven and Krispy Kreme debuted their offerings the first week in August. And Dunkin' Donuts, yeah, we remember, was right behind them last week. So when you pull up to Starbucks drive through mm -hmm. how do you not burst out laughing trying to remember iced apple crisp oat milk <laughs> shaken espresso? Uh, you know what? Uh, what helps is they have... The newer items right there on the board right there on the board wow and and usually they're pretty nice because i actually i think i tried that one last year and mm -hmm. i couldn't remember and i'm just like going through they're like yeah 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 we got you we'll see how it goes i don't always <laughs> read well as you know <laughs> 542 77 degrees stop <laughs> looking out there with trans guide looking at highway 281 at the quarry things look good there and also at 151 at loop 410 we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos again very soon. Can I interest you in a nice apple crisp oatmeal? Sure. Oh, I see I can't even <laughs> 546, now to late breaking news, a scary situation in more ways than one. A little girl wandering alone on a busy highway access road. That is the situation on the northeast side of town. Our Katrina Weber is live along Loop 410, not far from Harry Wurzbach Road. And that's where police are trying to find out who that girl is and where she came from. Katrina. Now, those are two big questions that they have, and unfortunately don't have any answers at this point. Uh, police are working here with the little girl. She's in the back of the police car and very upset, crying, understandably. She's out here alone in the middle of the night. Uh, police say that she was wandering along this access road near Loop 410, just east of Harry Wurzbach. More specifically, this area is called Ira Lee, the street here. And uh, police have been trying to talk to the little girl. They say uh, she doesn't seem to speak English or Spanish. They're trying to determine if perhaps she might have uh, some other issues going on, perhaps some special needs. But they are just mystified right now as to where she came from and who she is and how they can get her back home. Uh, she looks to be about three or four years old, and that's about all that we know at this point about her. Uh, police, again, have their hands full trying to figure out where she is and also to help calm her down a little bit. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, thank you, Katrina. 547. Go ahead and check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Hey, well, thank goodness those uh, San Antonio police found that little girl because it is very dark out there, and you can see traffic along busy highways like this moves uh, pretty quickly. So, uh, right, we'll hear from Katrina a little bit later on. But let's take a look around town. Thankfully, there are 37 at Hackberry. I'm not seeing any issues from these transguide cameras. Can't say the same from what we are seeing along TxDOT's website because a crash has reported here along 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. So our morning commute is already off to a busy start. I'll slip out of here and talk to our friends at Transguide in just a moment to find out exactly we can get a shot of the conditions out there. But as you're seeing from those Transguide cameras, traffic is moving and it's uh, not even 6 a.m. yet. Taking a drive back over here to 35 northbound at Alamo Street, we still have that stall 18 wheeler. Again, I've not seen any flashing lights out there, which means that we've not seen any uh, assistance the drivers received just yet. But let's be on the lookout. As we give you a wide look of the map, a crash popped up there off of 1604 over on the far northwest side. We'll find out how that impacts the drive time and hope everybody's doing okay, but let's get one last look around town. Again, you're seeing traffic moving there at 10 at Frio. Uh, we've been off to a pretty busy start, uh, but you know, we're not even at morning rush yet, so I imagine we're going to see a lot more traffic here in the next few minutes. Check out 10 at Hackberry East and Westbound lanes already getting pretty packed out there. Thank you, Stephen. Since it had been forever since we saw some rain around here, it's still nice to look at some of these pictures. Yes. And again, as is always the case, feast or famine. And when you have a tropical system, you get to the feast and then uh, <laughs> then a little bit too much at times. Five and a quarter inches measured there in Carrizo Springs. A little bit of minor flooding, but I'm sure that's all soaked in by now. But uh, 
Yeah, and, and it did cause a couple of problems, but everything is uh, hopefully turning a little bit greener and maybe that can tide us over until our next rain chances really move on in here, maybe over the weekend, but especially by the uh, middle part of next week. So we got a lot of clear skies right now. Again, step outside, plenty of humidity, feels like 81 degrees. We've got really thick humidity, especially here in town and up to the east and to the uh, the northeast. High temperatures yesterday. Notice how most everybody was below 100, which was good news. Uh, a lot of clouds hanging around here. We did still have a few uh, showers that popped up, and then we got into the triple digits. And look at that, even College Station at 106. Now today we're going to be back up into triple digits for most everybody. And yes, we will have 106 in Catula, 104 in Carrizo Springs, where usually you have some of the hotter temperatures. But then again. Again, look up to the northeast around Austin, LaGrange, College Station, some of that hot, really, really hot air. And that's because the center of that, the high pressure, the, the heat that has been plaguing us is up there in the central portion of the United States. So kind of the uh, the southwestern edge of that is up there in our extreme uh, northeastern uh, locations. So we're going to be up to 101 today, upper 90s, low hundreds around most of the area. We'll move through the 80s this morning and already get up into the low 90s. 90s today at noon and then 101 high temperature today. Again, enough humidity to where it's really going to feel like into the low hundreds. Heat index readings 105, 106 around much of the area. All right, again, we're talking about small rain chances tomorrow, just one or two of them possible. Same thing Saturday. Sunday, Monday as well. Then Tuesday, the better chance for some rain in here as we uh, get into the central portion or the middle portion, I should say, of the week because the high pressure that's like I said, it's up here to the north of us and that's why some of the hotter temperatures are in our northeastern counties. That thing is going to start to kind of shift off to the west a little bit more. So we get more of this easterly flow around that high, which means Yes, we have that small chance for some rain around here. Then we get into Monday, Tuesday, and we're going to have somewhat of a northwesterly flow. That big trough around the Great Lakes, that's actually going to pull a front into the area. Not going to move on through here, but it's just going to be lying right in the area. So that's going to keep some clouds around here. It's going to be sort of the focal point for some of these showers around. That's why we've got about a 30% chance for some rain Tuesday, Wednesday. Lower temperatures, upper 90s. I mean, still above normal but no triple digits. However, we're going to rack up enough hundreds to move into first place by the end of the weekend as far as the most <laughs> in a year. We've this had a rough round stretch round. and it looks like we've got another rough stretch ahead, don't we? Yeah, over the weekend. Okay, mm -hmm. well, it, at least it's the weekend and we'll be indoors for the K-Set Pigskin Classic, right? You said it. Thank you, Mike. 552, 77 degrees. A new movie out this weekend based on a true story and focuses on family, religious faith, and baseball. We're going to have a preview next. Ricky, I've seen you out there swinging that stick, even when you're suffering pain. But you can't play baseball. But all I want to do is play. When I swing that bat, I ain't crippled no more. Colin Ford stars in The Hill as a young man caught between his faith and family and what his body can and can't do. First and foremost, I love a true story. I love a real life story. Uh, and, I, and I love baseball. I grew up a Braves fan and a Dodgers fan once I moved to Los Angeles. Um, uh, I think that the faith element was really exciting to me as a man of faith myself. Ricky, baseball had to end eventually. Time to figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. First time you ever talked to me like a man is to tell me to forget the only thing I ever loved. Dennis Quaid plays Ricky's father, a traveling pastor who fears for his fragile son's body and soul. He was just a fantastic actor. I've watched him my entire life, so I really wanted to do justice and, and have uh, and, and be a good scene partner to him. They said he will never walk and he ran. How many miracles do you need? Ford's flair with the bat was no miracle, just practice. I had about three months to train before I got to set, um, just on the swing and some hitting and just other types of drills. All your hope, I cannot do this alone. Three. It's your time, Ricky! Determination and sacrifices have come down to this. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
We're getting ready for this year's KSAT Pigskin Classic coming up tomorrow night. Tickets on sale right now. Scan the QR code to see all your ticket options. It all kicks off tomorrow evening, followed by the big triple header on Saturday at the Alamo Dome. And our KSAT community team is excited to collect donations for the food bank during all four of those games this weekend. You can scan the QR code on your screen now to make a donation. Well, ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, UTSA students say they were greeted by some nasty conditions during move-in at their off-campus housing. What could happen next coming up? Plus, the baby you see here is under a year old and in desperate need of a special medical helmet. The urgent message from his mom and what some local doctors want parents to know. And up next, Saturday night's matchup in the KSAP Pigskin Classic is Brandeis versus O'Connor. What the team's coaches, who used to be teammates, are saying before kickoff. And checking Transguide, 151 looks good, so does 90 at Military. So far, so good this morning commute on this Thursday. We'll check with Stephen Cavazos on the other side of this commercial break.